Zoom, zoom. Hey, do you know where this toy car was made? This was made in China. Now, how did it reach my local toy store in my city? Let's study this chapter, Lifelines of National Economy, to understand this. So the manufacturing site of this toy car is called its supply location. And the local toy store from which I bought this car is known as the demand location. Various means of transport like roadways, railways, waterways and airways are required for the movement of these goods and services from the supply location to the demand location. People engaged in facilitating these movements of goods are called traders. In this chapter, we will see how modern means of transport and communication serve as a lifeline of a nation and its economy. So I have divided this chapter into three parts. In this first video, we shall discuss the introduction which we have already discussed and the means of transport and land transport. In the second video, we shall continue the means of transport and discuss waterways and airways. While in the third video, we shall discuss all about communication. So let's summarize the means of transport before studying them in detail. So there are three major modes of transport, land, water and air. In land transport, it is further divided into roadways, railways and pipelines. Water transport is further divided into inland waterways and overseas waterways. Inland waterways are those within a country, from two different ports within a country, while overseas waterways are between two countries or two or more countries and air there are two types of airways domestic airways and international airways domestic airways are within a country and international airways are international they are between two countries so let's start with the land transport first roadways india has one of the largest road networks in the world so about 54.7 lakh kilometer of road network is present in India. So can you tell me which is better, roadways or railways? You can click on the I button to select your option. So roadways are better than the railways. This has many reasons. So let's see the advantages of road, roadways over the railways. First, construction cost of roads is lower than that of railway lines. Second, roads are easier to lay on irregular land and steep slopes like Himalayas. So on the steep slopes like Himalayas, laying the roads is easier than laying the railway lines. Third, road transport is more economical for transport of small amount of goods over short distances. So if we have just a family of four or five people, then we would prefer road transport rather than the rail transport. And similar is for a small amount of goods. Fourth, road transport provides door-to-door -door services. So obviously, if you hire a truck to transport some goods from one place to another, then it would transport it to the location that you desire and not to some spot near that location. But if you prefer the rail method, then it would transfer the goods only to the railway station. And from that place, you will have to unload and load again and again to bring it to your house. So in this way, road transport provides door-to-door -door services. So cost of loading and unloading is much lesser. And fifth, roadways provide a link to connect other modes of transport. So consider you have to go to some place and you have to go by plane. So to reach the airport, to take that plane, you will obviously have to take the car. In this way, roads help to link the other modes of transport like the airways, waterways and railways. So now, let's see the types of roads in India. So roads can be classified on two bases. First, on the basis of material and second, on the basis of capacity. On basis of material, we have metal and unmetal roads. Metal roads are those which are all-weather roads. They are made up of cement concrete or bitumen of coal. Unmetal roads are seasonal roads and they can't be used in the rainy season. They are made up of 
सॉइल सैंड मर्ड एक्सेप्ट्रा सो दे आर आर कच्चा रोड्स वाइल द मेटल रोड्स आर पक्का रोड्स एंड द सेकेंड बेसिस टू क्लासीफाई द रोड्स इन इंडिया इज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ कैपेसिटी सो ऑन दिस बेसिस वी हैव सिक्स टाइप्स ऑफ रोड्स फर्स्ट द गोल्डन कॉर्डिनेटल सुपर हाईवेज सेकेंड नेशनल हाईवेज थर्ड स्टेट हाईवेज फोर्थ डिस्ट्रिक्ट रोड्स फिफ्थ अदर रोड्स एंड सिक्स बॉर्डर रोड फर्स्ट गोल्डन कॉर्डिनेटल सुपर हाईवेज सो इट कनेक्ट डेली कॉलकटा चेन्नई एंड मुंबई बाय सिक्स लेन सुपर हाईवेज इट ऑल्सो कनेक्ट the north south corridor that is shrinagar to kanyakumari and east west corridor that is silchar in assam to porbandar in gujarat these projects of super highways are being implemented by the nhar that is national highway authority of india second national highways they connect extreme parts of the country they are maintained by the cpwd that is Central Public Works Department, and an example of national highway is the Sher Shah Suri Mark between Delhi and Amritsar. Third, state highways. They link a state capital with different district headquarters. So every state has a capital, and within the state there are many districts. So the roads linking the state capital to the district headquarters is known as the state highway. they are constructed and maintained by the state public works department the pwd fourth district roads they connect the district headquarters with other places of the district they are maintained by the zila parishad fifth other roads they link rural roads and villages with towns so basically they are the rural roads they receive special impetus under the pradhan mantri gramin sadak yojana so the, they receive special help under this uh, special yojana sixth border roads so they are the roads in bordering areas of the country so in the places where we have international borders then these border roads are present in those areas they have improved the accessibility in areas of difficult terrain they are managed by the border roads organization of the india so bro manages all these border roads and the second mode of land transport is railways railways are the principal mode of transportation for freight and passengers in india total railway network is 66686887 km indian railway is the largest public sector undertaking in the country the first train steamed off from mumbai to thane in 1853 now let's understand the distribution of railway network so the factors influencing the distribution of railway network in india are physiographic economic and administrative factors northern plains which have high population and rich agricultural resources are the most favorable for railway expansion rivers require bridges to be constructed over them if the hilly ter- terrains tracks are laid through gaps and tunnels in himalayas sandy plains of rajasthan swamps of gujarat forests of madhya pradesh chatisgarh odisha jharkhand all the, in all these areas it is difficult to lay the railway lines konkan railway has been developed along india's west coast and he- has helped in the economic development of the delhi now let's see few limitations of rail transport first many passengers travel without ticket second theft or damaging of railway property is another cause of uh, damage to la- rail transport third people stop the train by pulling the chain unnecessary ca- causing the damage to railway fourth trains run late quite a time now let's discuss about pipelines so pipeline transport network is a new arrival in india use of pipelines in the past p- pipelines were used just to transport water to cities and industries but now we use pipelines for transporting 
crude oil, petroleum and natural gas from the oil and natural gas fields to fertilizer factories, refineries and thermal power plants. They are also used for transporting solids in the form of slurry. Like coal is transported with the help of pipelines in the form of slurry. Now let's see the advantages of pipelines. So inland locations of refineries like Mathura, Panipat, etc. could be thought only because of pipelines. Initial cost of laying the pipeline is very high but the running cost of pipeline is low. Thus pipeline ultimately results in a cheaper method of transportation. And it also rules out transshipment losses or delays. So during the shipment, when we take it from one place to another, then if we use some other means of transport, then it might get uh, lo some loss or some delay might be there. But by using the pipeline, such losses or delays are not possible. Now, there are three important pipeline networks in India. The first transports crude oil from the oil field in Digboy, Assam to Kanpur, Uttar Pradesh. And during this process, it uh, covers the following places Guwahati, Baroni, and Allahabad. So basically, this pipeline starts from the oil field in Digboy and then goes to Guwahati, then to Baroni, then to Allahabad, and finally to Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh. It has many branches like the Guwahati Siliguri branch, Baroni uh, Maloya branch, and Rajband Morigram branch. Second, the second pipeline also transports crude oil from Salaya in Gujarat to Jalandhar in Punjab. During this process, it covers the following places. Virambram, Mathura, Delhi, Sonipat. So its route is Salaya to Virambram to Mathura to Delhi to Sonipat and finally to Jalandhar in Punjab. It has many branches to connect Koyali and Chakshu in Gujarat. And the third is a gas pipeline which connects Hazira in Gujarat to Jagdishpur in Uttar Pradesh via Vijaypur in Madhya Pradesh. Its branches are Kota, Rajasthan and Shah Jahanapur, Uttar Pradesh and Babrala, UP. So it has branches to connect all these places but its main route is from Hazira in Gujarat to Jagdishpur in Uttar Pradesh. And this is a gas pipeline. So this was all for today. In the next lecture, we shall discuss about the waterways and airways. So stay tuned.